What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm super excited to be back here. I know I've been away for some time. I'm always coming on and off sometimes because yeah, we have something that we needed to take care of off social media for a while. Yes. So anyway, with no further ado, let's dive in into today's video. We're reacting to some interesting clip today. So let's do this. Today on Divorce Court, Ramon is a very controlling person. Uh, sometimes, you know, she'll wear things that are a little bit provocative. He would prefer me to just be in sweats and basketball shorts and a white tee all day or probably be in the house. I want to marry her. I just would like to address and um, work out these, these small kinks before we do so. With our struggle, I feel like a lot of it has fallen more on my shoulders than his. It's a bit frustrating. It, it stresses us out, you know, when you only have one person paying the bills. I've been broken down before to where I never really spoke up, so I'm gaining my voice now at reason why we're here. I've taken this scenario all the way in my mind. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that this woman could be a, a good woman for me. This is someone I could spend the rest of my life with. Okay. Divorce court is now in session. Ashley Tuluxen and Ramon Gibson, the two of you, have been together for eight months. I'm going to start with you, Ms. Tuluxen. I know you love him, but tell me what the concerns are. Well, my concerns are his controlling issues, his jealousy, um, his attitude, the way he reacts with our children, finances, the way he controls them, how he handles things. Is there anything you like about him? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't sounding very good at all. I just remembered one pastor say something some time ago. He said, if somebody doesn't like like more than three things about you, are you sure you're like really with the right person? Because the way she mentioned everything, I like, what do you like about him? It seems like you don't like anything or he has issues in everything. <laughs> Give me some examples of the things you think he does that are excessively controlling. My clothes. Okay. He, do? He, do, he doesn't like anything in my closet, not even my sweats, but won't replace them. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. Um, when we go out in public, uh, as for instance, we went to... My so this, to you, is inappropriate. I got, I got something in the screen. You don't like her wearing something like that. I do feel it's a little inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I do. I don't wear those items mm, anymore. Yeah, uh -huh. I've made those adjustments for him. I, I dress down, I wear sweats, I wear jeans. I barely put on leggings. I don't wear halter tops. I don't do my stomach out anymore. Has that changed his attitude? Has he seen the changes and is now okay with how you dress? No, he still has an issue with the things Mr. that Gibson, I put on. Mr. Gibson, you, do you notice that she's changed her manner of dress? I haven't noticed it as much. Um, you know, mm. <laughs> You've noticed some change. I've noticed some change. But it's I've not sufficient. It's not sufficient, I don't think, Your Honor. But, I, you know, I understand that she feels I'm controlling about it. You know, I just wish that she would be more mindful of some of the reactions that she gets when she does wear some of the things that she wears. And it's not that it's uh, inappropriate, necessarily. It's just it causes me to have a staring contest with the gentleman on the next aisle. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Doesn't at all. That's his ego. Doesn't at all. That, yeah. yeah. That, th that's your ego dealing with it. And you know what I mean? Well it, it, it's like a culture where, you know, men are dogs, so women can't leave the house. You know what I mean? Right. It's exactly like, so, it so what, what, what you have to do is behave better as men and leave women alone. <laughs> I entirely agree with the judge in this situation. Like, Yes, men will stare, men will look, whether you like it or not. There is nothing a woman will wear and men will not look at her. And it also boils down to the facts when we talk about like all this rape situation, they're like, what was she wearing when she got raped or whatever? It doesn't matter what you're wearing. If a man is a pervert, he would do what perverts do. So definitely this one is on this guy. It's his insecurity working here. But I really want to say something. I, 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 For me personally, like I always tell myself, learn how to choose your battle wisely. It's a, it's a saying that I love so much that I tell myself every time when it comes to anything that has to do with relationship. I know what I can deal with and what I cannot deal with for example for me i know personally i will have issues with like those kind of outfits that kind of women wear that exposes themselves like almost they are going almost naked or half naked or whatever so i've learned ahead of time to pick my battle wisely and what this means in this sense is that if you are a person that dress a certain way I will never in this life approach you for a relationship. Never, ever, ever will I do that. Because 
this is who you are. I'm not trying to get involved with you and then change who you are. No, I want to come in and like who I see you are and who you are becoming. So I, ahead of time, I make sure that I'm not picking a woman that already in her mind dressed a certain way and believe that she's okay dressing that way because I won't come and be battling with you with all this. Um, a man shouldn't tell a woman what to wear. My body is my body kind of situation. I don't want to come and fight those battles. No, I don't want to do that. So ahead of time, I know the kind of woman and the kind of dressing I want my woman or my wife to be dressed dressing how she i want her to be dressed so i will look for a woman that dresses that way already or a woman that is looking to dress that way already not the ones that expose themselves and then i come and be complaining no i saw her that way and i picked her i shouldn't be complaining <laughs> so i get the idea that people you're supposed to be better and all those kind of stuff but loving people as they are is a thing but then we know that there are limits to this thing but then at the same time you shouldn't see that somebody is a certain way then you want to get involved with them and change who they are or maybe what they really want to do so uh, this is also to guys out there pick your battle wisely if you see something in a woman and you know it's something that you cannot deal with don't get yourself involved with that woman because it will stress you out it will stress that woman out because she will try to change her from who she is not I get it. I get it. There are so many other things you might like about her. But if you know that there are deal breakers for you, there are things that are called to you as a man that you wouldn't want to see your woman do, then don't pick that woman because it will cause a lot of problem amongst you. In this case, it's causing a problem for them in this relationship because the guy is not trying to control every single thing she does in that sense. Don't wear this. Don't wear that. No, it doesn't work that way, sir. You picked her. You have to deal with that. Just pray that she gets to that point where she wants to change on her own time because the best change you can actually change it or the best change you want from your partner in a relationship is a change that comes from their hearts from within i don't want my partner changing because of me because it will not last it will be a struggle so you shouldn't be trying to change people because of you ensure that they are changing because of themselves and what they want to do not because of you they want to change they're changing because of who they want to become and not because of you because those ones they don't last i hope you get this That's what I'm talking about. And if, if, if a guy looks at her, he looks at her. You know, if, if, if your, your game is strong, she coming on with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the point that I try to make to him all the time. You say it, it, it's everything. Makeup, hair, friends. Exp give me the whole panorama. Since I started my new job, I, I mean, I'm somebody who's always done my hair. Mm -hmm. It's in our relationship. I don't. I, I go towards the curly, natural look. I do love my hair straight, so I've been trying to find myself again as I feel uncomfortable. But he doesn't like your hair straight? He loves it straight, but he feels like I'm doing too much. If I get up for work in the morning, it's, why are you straightening your hair before you go to work? Why are you putting on eyeliner? Mmm, something's different today. Like I mean, what it, I mean, sir, I can't dress what's your up. Problem? I can't do, you, do don't what you I want to look good? What's your problem, sir? Her makeup application? <laughs> I wouldn't call it monitoring her makeup application. I'm just wondering why why she jazzes herself up so much to go and do something so casual. You know, what, this is not what, what, what does she do for for a living? Uh, she's an associate at a large retail store. Okay. And you think she puts on too much makeup for that? I believe it's a little much. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like she's going for a, a modeling gig. She's going to, you know. Is it more than I, what I, she's I mean, got on insecurity. now? Is this her usual This is a security issue for you, No, ma'am. It's a little bit more jazzed up than this. More jazzed up than that? Yes, sir. She has so, a... So what do you think her, I, her objective is? I think her objective is to uh, to receive some type of attention and in turn, you know, transmute it on the inside to make herself feel better about, you know, whatever. I guess... Do you think she has low self-esteem? Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Why? She she just feels like she has to tone. She feels like she can't doozy herself up. She can't jazz herself up because she feels that I may react a certain way. Mm. And Which I may true. say that, well, why, I may say that you're doing too much when we're only going grocery shopping yeah. or, yeah. you Which know. has nothing to do with her self-esteem. It has mm. everything, everything to do, to do with, with you. you. There is a theme here. Mm -hmm. I want you to grasp it as we continue. Mm -hmm. There are other things about which you find yeah, him. It's, it's certainly you, sir. It's certainly, it's a you problem, not really her because you're the one that is feeling insecure that somebody else might talk to her. It's not like if she was taking pictures of herself, 
naked or almost naked and posting it on social media then we all will have a problem with that we will know that she's seeking attention and all those kind of stuff but then on a day-to-day basis if she finds it okay for her to just want to make up and go out there and look good then it's not a problem as long as she's not like exposing her body that i think that's the problem like if you have a problem with a woman making up i'm not a big fan of makeup though but like if you have a problem of a woman making up and going out on her own if that's what she likes then i think your problem is deeper than what you're actually making it making of it it's not really her problem this part it's you sir it's you including your friends so i want to move on off of your looks and mm-hmm. on to other areas you say he's controlling with respect to your friends why don't you explain that to me um i have a friend and she her job of choice isn't exactly something that i condone and nobody else that i know would actually condone so he doesn't of course but she um well now i got to know what the job of choice is <laughs> she's in the entertainment field uh she's a, i'm in the entertainment she's, field she's a, <laughs> she's a stripper there you, oh, you better yeah. go there you go and um she's tried to change when it comes to that and everything and she needed my support for something she was really down and even though i didn't necessarily support the issue I still helped her out because she's a friend of mine. She needed right. a ride somewhere. Right. And the attitude that I get from him is, as long as you don't do this, and I'm like, well, don't you trust me enough not to do this? Mm-hmm. You should know better than that. Mr. Gibson, your response to that? It's more than just entertainment. This is a friend that she's been friends with um, for a minute. Um, as far as the stripping is concerned, this particular incident she was talking about, she, the friend requested that she be dropped off at a stripper party. Mm-hmm. The friend had no other person there, and she had no ride back. So I'm assuming that my girl is the one to be picking her up. So it was a safety concern on your part that... Absolutely. ...she and this woman was out there. What I want to talk about is, because I think this is really important, is the the disconnect that you have about the manner in which the children should be raised. Because I think that is is very important when you're talking about whether or not you're going to get married. Right. Now, the kids that live in the house with you are hers. The one but, child, yeah. Okay, one before child. we go into this particular case they're about discussing, like, when it comes to friendship, I believe friendship is very, very important when it comes to marriage. The kind of friends you have will actually, in a way, reflect the kind of relationship you might experience or might have because one thing we don't really pay so much attention is that we get influenced by people a lot i understand the fact that well she might not have any intention of doing anything of becoming a stripper or doing whatever but then at the same time just little influence is being deposited in us no matter how much we think we are solid that's why it's very very important like you cannot really have a close tight friend that is your like your day one and they're into that kind of business and then you think you might not be influenced the truth is that you might to an extent you might not know the level of influence they will have over you until you find yourself being involved in that situation too so like i understand the concern when it comes to friendship because i've seen it doing this a lot i've seen friends deceive their friends friends do things and they don't even you start hearing one thing led to another and they did it one so it's very very important and that we'll be mindful of the kind of friends we keep even if they are our very close friends once they start going down the path that we know that isn't really right isn't really like the kind of um, thing we want to identify with i'm not saying you should end all form of communication or like you banish them from your life or whatnot but it's important to put some boundaries and some limitations to what you do with those kind of persons because the more room you give to some certain things, the more they come in and they grow and they become a big issue. And not just for you as a person, but in your relationship. One thing you don't want to happen is to allow something external that could be avoided to become an internal issue in your relationship with your partner. So be mindful of your friends. I get this and also the whole dropping off in the evening and all those stuff. It's also a security issue. I get that. And also try to get the ladies part of trying to help a friend who has been a long time friend. But then we need to learn boundaries. We need to learn how to put rules around these things to help us not to become victim even though we want our partner to trust us we also have to create that room for them to see reasons to be able to trust us i hope that makes sense by a previous relationship do you have any together no ma'am not okay together. so there's one child in the household currently yes. okay yes you have concerns about the way she parents why don't you explain that to me okay well recently my my son was in town from florida he's been here for the summer um, okay. he just recently went home 
So the boys have been together. Mm -hmm. All right, now, of course, they're boys. They're, they, they play fight, they do all this. They play video games and stuff like that. Now, me, I'm, I'm used to my grandfather always saying, you know, stop all that running around my house, all the ruckus. Mm -hmm. So if they're in their horse playing, I may say, hey, you know, and I'm loud with it. Mm -hmm. Hey, stop all of that horse playing or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. Or go outside. And she, it may come off as abrasive to her. You know, my family is a military background. Right. I come from a military background. So as far as doing the homework at the dining room table, it's to, to leave you, to get rid of those influences in the room. You got video games in the room. Mm -hmm. You got TV in the room. Get out. Yeah, yeah, just cut all that out. Yeah. Ms. Tuluxing, what do you see as the problem with the manner in which he engages with the children? It's, it's just the manner that he does it. It's forceful. Uh -huh. And it's, it, it scares the children from time to time. Like, you can see that they're... You know, they're You pulling. think it's too much for, it's, the, it's for too the nature much. of the misconduct. Exactly. You're pressing for the ring now, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. You know, a ring don't help a controlling dude. I understand that. <laughs> I completely understand that. But I sometimes... I really address these kids on because I don't know if, I don't remember, I don't know if the judge addressed it, but then, I mean, these are boys. You gotta let the man do the job. <laughs> I'll have to say this this time around because I know women can be very emotional and also like, hey, don't do this to him. And like the way they raise boys. But see, if you want to really raise boys, you have to be, to some extent, be very strict with them and show that dominance. Because if you go all soft on boys, they will, they will disrespect you. They will mess you up. So, I mean, except he's going out of control, like when it comes to discipline or whatever. But if it's not out of control, please let that man do what he had to do when it comes to the kids because the way you raise male child is not this, it's not exactly the way you raise female child but then yeah we raise children in some certain way together with the same thing and principle but then there are some other kind of influence the man has on children on his kids that a woman will not have and there are some influence a woman will have on his kids on her kids that a man will not have so we bring different deposits when it comes to raising kids so when a man is doing the manly thing with the kids and especially the boys please let him do his thing please especially when he's trying to put them in check that marriage license like a bill of sale <laughs> you my wife now uh I see... Are you as distressed as you indicated you were in this paperwork about the manner in which he tries to dictate everything you do? Yes, because for me, I've, I've been in those relationships where I've been broken down, and I don't want to go through that again. I will not go through that again. So to see anything that might lead that way, I can't you do can't it. You can have it. I can't do it. So it, it breaks me apart every time I see something coming at me, the attitude, the controlling. It's something I've been, I've been, I mean, mentally broken down before. And I won't do it again. Mr. Gibson, your response to that. Is, did, did you understand it to be her distress as intense as it is? And do you believe that she's simply misconstruing what you're doing or saying? I think she... Um... I didn't know it was that intense. No, no, Your Honor. But she may misconstrue. But I'm, I'm, I'm really hearing her for the first time and knowing how intense it really is. And like I said, I've been self-evaluating, you know, just to try to tone that down. But, you know, I didn't know it was this deep, you know. So now I, I'm seeing. That's the thing with a lot of people in relationships. Like, when their partner is talking to them, they don't listen. They just listen from for the purpose of response. They don't listen to actually understand what the person is trying to communicate. And this is one thing I've seen with this couple right here now. And that's one thing I also want you to pay attention to in your own relationship. Sometimes don't just listen so that you can respond to what they are saying. Listen so that you can understand what they are saying because you can only understand people when you put yourself in their position in most situations. like. What are they feeling? What are they actually feeling? They might not be able to express everything, but when you pay close attention, you get to see how whatever you're doing or whatever situation you people are going through, how it's affecting them. And when you're able to get to that point, that's when you'll be able to make that required changes that needs to be made to be able to pro like move your relationship even further. But when you don't listen and you're only listening to respond to them so that they will feel attacked too because you're feeling attacked because of their complaints, then you will never make any headway. So you see what he said he's just hearing her for the first time he's just actually understanding her point of view i guess maybe because there's a third party here in this in this case because sometimes people only 
tend to understand or tend to listen better when there's a third party involved telling them or making things clearer because they feel like oh my partner is always speaking from a manipulative or maybe speaking from their own personal point of view they don't want to see mine or whatever but then when you listen attentively to understand you get to understand what your partner is telling you and what's hurting them and you're able to move forward in that relationship you know okay. i don't like to see her hurt like that you know i know i don't intend to abuse her it's never from a place of uh, mental abuse you okay know, that's not i got you style. gibbs i don't think you're a bad guy i think you know you're a little rigid and you would like to not be so rigid and i want you to remember that to be empathetic is to understand that though you ne may not be thirsty someone else may need a glass of water. Mm -hmm. So just because Very it doesn't true. feel that way to you, you have to inquire a of advice. a woman as to why she does what she does and feels the way she does. And even if it, you don't agree with it, you're gonna have to say, I love her enough to allow her to be an individual. And don't let your fear, and that's all jealousy is, other dudes looking at her and the clothes too tight, that's just your insecurity. Do not let your insecurity run your life. Just don't let it happen. Because if you let your insecurity run her life, you're gonna make her life smaller and smaller and smaller Miserable. until one day she can't move no more and then she just ups and goes, okay? I will give you this license. I, I, I can't believe it. I, I can't was even believe it to too. Torture this sucker. <laughs> I can't even believe it too. I was, I was. I'm gonna give you this license, but I, I want you to, do you hear and feel what I said? I do, I do. And I just want her to know, you know, that no matter what, I'm always going to come to you and try to communicate and try to get to the bottom of it because under no circumstances do I want to go to go to bed mad with you. Yeah, but 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 understand, it's not about winning the argument. It's about understanding where she's coming from right. and exactly. accepting that she may want to do something differently, and that's okay. Exactly. Women. Yes. Mm -hmm. This matter is adjourned. Yeah. Nice one, Judge. Yes, did you have something you wanted to say? I do. I love you. I don't want to lose you. I'm hearing what you've got to say. So, you know, let's work through this together. So, I just want to know. If you're, if that you're sounds married. sweet. Oh, I'm on with you, but, 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 I'm on with you, but. I'm on with you, but, but, but. Well, wedding well, I'm happy for them. I'm happy. But personally, personally, I would still give this a little bit more time. I would let it give it a little bit more time, maybe some months before you actually finally get married. I, I know getting engaged is no marriage. It can break off any time. But then I will still take my time to actually watch whatever we have discussed right now, whatever the judge has said or whatever they are the outcome becomes to see if those changes are made and if those changes are made then we can now proceed with the marriage but if those changes are not made you run for your life because the truth is that most of the issues most people face in their marriages today are things they saw in the relationship but decided to ignore it i know you, this is not the first time you're hearing this people see red flags and they call it orange and they get into the marriage and then it becomes an issue so you are seeing this right now just in case this is you maybe you find yourself in this similar situation i just want to encourage you don't rush into marriage take your time resolve whatever differences you have and then monitor the relationship watch it and see what happens over time is there changes can we move forward and if there's no changes and it's not looking like something that will be permanent and not looking like it's genuine then don't go ahead sign out it's best that way but then if you notice that there are changes being made and they are being intentional about listening to you understanding you and both of you are able to make progress then you can proceed to get married i'm not saying that people are beyond changing but then you also have to be very careful that the change is coming from a good place and it's genuine so i hope you guys learned from today's video if you enjoyed it please do where to subscribe to my channel i'll be bringing you more of this kind of reaction videos this kind of video so that i can also F with what because i love judge nitorda a lot she talks so much sense so with what she said and with the addition of the things i will also say to the videos i hope you learn so much to be able to navigate your relationship your marriages and have a successful one because it's all my desire to see you succeed in marriage that's why i am bringing this to you so if you enjoyed this video like i said earlier subscribe hit the notification button so that you'll be notified the next time i upload a video and don't forget to like this video leave a comment about what stood out to you in today's video all right guys see you in the next video bye